I'm Fig. Welcome to my studio. Today I'd like to make a marble. To make this marble, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pre-used cane. You can see I've taken some colors and I blended them together. And I pulled out this long rod. It's no longer long. But what I could do is whack this in half and I can make a marble out of each half. And then I could have a family of marbles. So I'm going to take my trusty handy dandy disc nippers. And I'm going to put my nippers right where I want to cut it. And I'm going to squeeze. Ah, oh yeah. <laughs> and now I have two pieces. Okay, so what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to take the piece of glass that I have. And we'll take one of these green ones that I cut previously. And I'm going to load it up into this kiln over here. I have the kiln parked at 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to put that cane right inside the kiln so it can warm up and get up to about a thousand degrees. Because what happens is this glass is thermally, thermally reactive. And if I just jack it into the fire right quick, the whole piece is just going to shatter on me. So I want to relieve that stress in the oven a little bit. So let's turn on the fire and make it into a marble. So first I'll add a little propane, a little sparky sparky a little oxygen, boom, we got some fire. Then I'm gonna take this rod here and I'm gonna warm it up in the flame. At the very end, it'll be molten and I could glue it on to a piece of glass that I have in the oven warming up previously to a thousand degrees. Just like movie magic or those TV shows where they cook where they prepare a casserole or a cake or something and they stick it in the oven and immediately they're pulling it out, it's all baked. That's because they already had a fully baked one in the oven before they stuck the recipe inside the oven. Okay, so I've heated up the end of that rod till it's a blob and I'm gonna reach over into the oven. I'm just gonna open up the door a little bit, reach in there and just glue it onto the end of the pre-warmed stick. And I'm going to come right out and stick it right into the fire. Let me put on a bigger fire. Turn on the bigger torch underneath there. And I'm going to start warming that up in the flame. And you'll see there's a little bit of dust maybe. That's kiln dust. It's just crap that was on the floor of the kiln. I don't want that in my marble. So I'm going to take this rag and I'm just going to brush off all that dust so we don't get dirt into our marble. You don't want no dirty marbles. All right. So now I'm gonna warm this up in the flame. And I'm gonna try to center this on the rod. I'm just gonna grab it and mush it over so it's tracking center to this clear rod that I'm holding. And when I turn this into a round ball, it's gonna be kind of small. So let me add a little bit of clear glass over the top of all this. Go back to a smaller flame and I'll heat up this clear rod and melt some glass and I'm going to apply it to that green rod. While I'm melting this clear glass, I'll keep this green rod that I pulled out of the oven warm in the backwash so it doesn't get cold and shatter. And then Using this like a paintbrush and the molten glass, I'm just going to brush that molten glass right onto the side of that and add to that wall. And I'm just going to work my way all the way around. Right up against that last brush stroke, I'll put another one. Come back into the flame, melt another blob of glass, brush it on there. Come back into the flame, heat it up, and brush it on. A couple more and I think we'll be there. <clears throat> so I heat it up, get it all gooey, and then just spooge it on. And I'm just putting the last one on right now. And that'll just give more mass to the glass marble, and it'll also add a layer of clear over the top, which will give it some more optical uh, magnification, give that marble a little bit more punch. So now I'm going to tweeze this end and pinch it down so all those lines come together and meet at the bottom. I'm going to pinch off a loaf, so to speak, there. 
So what I do is I, you just saw me, grab, pull, and twist, 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 until I work my way all the way around. Then I'm going to take my handy dandy scissors, these are pruning shears, for a bonsai, and I'm just going to carve a line, like a jack line, right in there where I want the glass to go. And then I'm going to squeeze, 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 squeeze as I'm rotating and pinch down a thin neck. That's going to pinch all those colors now to a nice termination point. There we go. Knock that off. Throw in my garbage. Okay, so now all those colors come to a nice termination. I'm going to heat this whole thing up into the flame and get it nice and gooey and soft. And when that happens, the glass will congeal into a nice round ball. And that is how I create half of a marble. So this side that's farthest away from my hand, you can see is nice and round. The side that's attached to, close to my hand is still goofy. So what I'm going to do is preserve this round side by coming out of the heat letting the glass get cold and set up and become hard. And then, I'll glue it onto this rod. So I'm going to sharpen a pencil point in this rod while this is cooling off. Just like a, you may have seen a previous <clears throat> video I made where I was sharpening pencil points. I just heat up the very tip. I do complete revolutions and I'm going to make a pencil point. And when I glue it onto the end here, Jiggly. It um, leaves a much smaller footprint than that big mess that I have over there on my to my left. So I'm going to put that side of the marble into the flame, let it wash on, and the flame's going to get it soft, and it's going to cut away this old hand. Ditch that over there, and then I'm just going to continue the twist by grabbing, pulling, twisting, grabbing, pulling, twisting, grabbing, pulling, twisting as I work my way all the way around that marble, and you may see those yellow lines are getting more of a twist, I'm stretching out, and I'll come in with my scissors to jack in a termination or cut line. So as I'm turning, I'm just doing very gentle nip, 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 nip squeezes with my fingers, and it's just bearing down into that little crease line. And it's just getting smaller and smaller, and all those colors terminate in one little spot. It looks really pretty. Knock that off. I'll throw that into my pot of water, garbage pail over here. All that's left is to make this round. So I'm just going to heat it up. I do have a marble mold. That'll make it go faster. Just go in a hole that's smaller than the marble and ride the rim. I come in low, so I'm working the part closest to my hand first, and then I work my way over the top. And now the side I just did is actually rounder than the original side. So we'll transfer it back. I'll make a pencil point on another rod, and we'll do one final transfer. Pencil point, heat that pencil point, make it even sharper still. This will be a much more delicate attachment. Melt this side off, throw away some of that extra glass. Now I'll get that side totally round. Once again, I come in low and work my way up, bringing my elbow up. So what happens is when I'm in the marble mold, if I'm working this part closest to where I'm attached, closest to my hand first, and then I work my way away from that and get all the way around. And it's a simple little marble. It doesn't have the nicest twist on it, but somebody will love that. What's left next is to put it into the kiln to cool off to room temperature. Um, if I did want to put a nicer twist on it, I'd tighten up the flame and 
twist it harder. Let's see if I can do that real quick. Just heat up the middle of that marble. And there it goes, nice and tight, twisted lines. It's a better design. And I'm fucking, so I made you guys have to watch in a few more seconds of me making a marble. Nice little peewee. Make that round again. See, one of the tricks to making it really round is don't be afraid to keep transferring it back and forth. I made it this side rounder, but I distorted the other side where I'm attached. So I need to attach yet again. This will be the final attachment. So we'll make it really delicate, very tenuous. Gently melt off the other side that's yucky. Mold, I don't need a mold to make the marbles totally round. They just make the process go faster. Flame really does all the work. Flame and gravity and surface tension. The marble mold just expediates the process so the fire has less to do. All right, now that I've made a nice round marble, the last thing is to put it back into the oven to cool off. Because if it cools off to room temperature lickety split, it's gonna break. So there's various ways I can put this away. One of the things that I can do is take a pair of tweezers, I weld it on, it's not the nicest weld, but I weld in some washers on the end there. I can just gently grab that. And it's pretty welded on pretty tight. So another way I can do it, take a marble mold. I actually like to gently warm up the graphite. It's not that expensive a mold, and some people might complain that it destroys the graphite, but I've been doing this for years, and I don't care. All right, heat that up. Use the scissors to sever that, put that belly button right into the fire, melt it nice and smooth, and then I'll just load this into the kiln, and we got them all. Thanks.